Greetings, Earthlings, and welcome to another OS Nerd video. In this video, it's slightly complicated. So, to some parts of the world, this is known as Next Step 4.0, codename Mecca. To other parts of the world, it's known as Open Step 4.0 Pre-Release 1, codename Mecca. I suspect this was meant to be Next Step 4. There are a few resources on the installation media that back this up. For example, the Upgrader has Next Step 4 on it. The Login Banner has Next Step on it. And simply what most likely happened was Steve put his emphasis on the Open Step specification and then got with Sun to create Open Step for Solaris. And rather than have two names, Next Step and Open Step, um, he decided to unify things, so he got rid of the next step name and created the open step name. So you had open step for Solaris, open step for Mac, which was next on implementation, and that's why I think this is this this had its name changed from next step four beta um, to open step 4.0 PR1. So this was released, um, or the kernel is dated 1995, September 1995. I don't know when media was shipped out to people. If anyone does, I'd be interested to know. Um, this particular installation is um, OpenStep for Mac Intel. It is running in a VMware instance on an i7-6950X. Um, the CPU is clocked at 4 gigahertz. The VM has 512 megabytes of memory. It is using the VMware network display and mouse driver and the stock Sound Blaster 16 driver with Sound Blaster 16 emulation enabled inside the VMware image. And as you can see, the graphics are glorious 32-bit 1920 by 1080. So let's log in and see what this looks like. So as we can see, it looks vastly different to anything Next had done, and indeed anything Next will do. Um, the system reverts back to its Next Step look and feel, right the way through until Apple purchased Next and then create Rhapsody. Now the story goes that the look and feel was reverted because of the cost of retraining everyone to use the new interface. I don't really buy that. If anyone has any anecdotal evidence of this or, or any actual proof that the interface was reverted due to the cost of retraining, I'd be very interested to hear. If you know anything about this beta or you worked for Next or, or you had access to this, you, you know, you were, you were a, um, a Next friendly ISV or what have you, if you have any information at all about this beta, let me know. I'd be, I'd be very interested to hear it. So I think the actual changes to the interface are somewhat self-explanatory. Um, we no longer have a dock. We have this tabbed thing at the bottom of the screen. Um, we have buttons where the shelf would be on the file viewer. Uh, we have uh, shading, uh, gradient shading on the menu and on the title bars. We have a different button style. We have icons in the top left of the windows. Yeah, under the hood it's pretty much the same underlying Mac microkernel. Um, it has both AppKit and Foundation as well as the original Next AppKit. Um, so this can run Next Step 3 applications as well as um, applications designed for uh, this particular version of OpenStep. Um, so let's, let's have a look at the actual applications themselves. Well, let's start with the file manager, what these buttons do. So we have a button that returns us to our home directory. Um, I believe this button will mount any removable media that you have and this button will eject removable media that you have. Um, this button will let you create a new directory um, such as that. Um, now this button here will open whatever you want as a directory. Um, now what I mean by that is if I go, uh, let's have a look and go here and then click this. It opens up the emacs.app as a directory so you can see the contents of, of, of the actual app wrapper itself. This is useful if you want to um, do some work inside the app wrapper or if you have some other kind of wrapper that has contents that you want to get access to. This was also available in Next Step 3 um, by going to File, Open as Folder. So here we have the Copy button. 
which creates a copy of the folder and here we have the compress button and that will then go and compress that folder into a dot compressed file and this button basically deletes which sends them to the recycler and as usual if you want to empty the recycler you go to file empty recycler next here we have an option that changes the style so for example this is in browser view uh, this is in list view and then this is in icon view there was a strange bug in icon view I found that when I went into local apps it's telling me I have six icons um, I don't know why it does that um, even if I go to view update viewers uh, I'm going to put that down to the fact that this is a beta version of file manager if you go back into column view of course you have all of the applications next we have the finder that lets you search your home directory or what have you um, then we have help and then we have the information panel or the inspector and then finally we have the processes that lets you see running applications and background tasks as well uh, and that's pretty much the same uh, most of this in fact all of this was available in next step 3.3 just using the menu rather than the buttons this is where the shelf was so let's have a look at some of the other applications that we have. I'm going to look at the shelf later on. Um, I just want to spend a quick amount of time looking through the differences in applications first. Um, so the main difference is uh, on the dock, um, this clock thing would have been the preferences. So if you double click on it, preferences would load, but preferences now is its own application. The clock just lets you um, change the style of the clock itself on the dock, or, sorry, on the shelf. Um, preferences is where all the user preferences goes. There's not really many differences. The, um, there is a new preference pane, and that's for startup applications. So if you wanted an application to start at startup, you just drag it from the file manager into the preference pane and if you wanted to stop it you just press delete um, so that's pretty much it you can quit it there's no need to hide it anymore because it's not providing the clock um, so edit application is different this is a new build it doesn't support uh, the same kind of programming tools that the previous version did but the previous editor is still around for you to use anyway um, Fax Reader is pretty much the same, Grab is pretty much the same, Librarian, this is actually still a Next Step 3.3 application. Uh, we'll get to Mail Viewer in a minute. Mail is the old, this, this was installed as an upgrade on top of NS33, so there's a lot of Next Step applications lying around, and the ma uh, Mail is the, um, is the Mail client from Next Step 3.3. Next time I'll give a bit of a demo of that in a second. Preview is pretty much the same. Um, print manager quotations. I think quotations. Yep, quotations is an NS33 application. Uh, Webster is an OpenStep application. Uh, terminal. And we have two new additions. We have um, we have viewer and workspace. Now originally these were unified and they lived under user, lib, next step, workspace, or what have you. But now they're actually in the next apps. Um, folder double clicking on them doesn't really do anything because for all intents and purposes they're launched anyway so um, next time I'll give a demo of next time before I give a demo of mail and to do that I'm going to go to my home directory and I'm going to double click on this so next time is an implementation of QuickTime 1. Um, this would have been highly optimized for the Motorola 68040. I don't know if it would play on an 030, but any black hardware that had an 040 should play stuff fairly fine. Um, it's not going to have a problem on this machine because it is a um, it is a 4 gigahertz i7. Let's have a look.
yes, that's quite enough of that. But yes, that's that's next time. Um, it was very hard work actually trying to find a movie that could play in next time. Um, it uses the Cinepack codec, um, so like trying to find a, a video that played for QuickTime One. Basically, um, the internet is full of stuff that plays in modern QuickTime, but not QuickTime One. Um, I have to say a big thanks to um, the Next Computers forums, um, Chawling Food Air. Someone posted that the making of Mist movie on the 1995 Mist CD-ROM actually worked. So I was able to dig out a copy of that, copy it across to the next, um, and play it. And um, yeah, thank you very much. So next, we're going to have a look at Mail Viewer. And this has undergone massive amount of changes, and it is also very, very buggy in this release. Um, so have a look at the mail from Steve Jobs. Um, yeah, you have to resize the window um, to actually get at it. Um, so yeah, bugs galore, but it is it is fully usable. You can send and receive email using this. Um, it's just that you have to resize it every once in a while to actually be able to read anything. Um, so as you can see here, we have the welcome to OpenStep. Um, this is pretty much the same email as in next step, just they've run a regular expression replacing next step with OpenStep. Um, and you can also deal with attachments in the same way. I'll just have to resize this to get the scroll bar. So yes, mail pictures still work. Um, and let's have a look. This has got attachments in it. Okay, so um, attachments pretty much work the same way. This is the next mail. You could have a double click on the attachment. So if I double click on this one, it'll open up. Um, in um, It'll open the active mailbox as a folder. And it'll take me to where the attachments are for the... Um, for the email, so if I double click on this one, um, it won't launch in, in Sound Player, but it will give me a sound inspector that I can play the sound from. Well, give me a next computer, and my life will be just fine. Mm -hmm. Well, give me a next computer I'm telling you, it's one of a kind well, it's Yeah, thanks for that. Um, you can also, as always, um, drag things out. Uh, oops, I'm going to go for that one. You can, of course, drag things out into your home directory. So we can... Uh, This is the one I wanted. We can do that. Um, so, sound player. At some point, this stopped being a drag target. Um, so, let's see if I can do it here. No, I can't. So, I need to go and open the file as usual. And. <laughs> Stop, 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 stop. Thank you. Um, these sounds, they were found, um, I believe, the Vision in Black comes from the Nebula uh, CD for Next Step. And I think I got this one off the Walnut Creek CD-ROM. Um, if you want to know more about these sounds, let me know and I will tell you where I got them from. So yes, that's email. Uh, usual rules apply. You click on Compose. Um, Actually, I'm going to show you the rest of the buttons first. This is how you delete an email. I believe this one is compacting your mailbox. Uh, this lets you do various things. So you can uh, sort by address, sort by... I don't know what that is. Um, so various various forms of sorting. Um, that's by date, so that, that's that's fine. So you hit New. Um, you, ha you can reply. Now there's a bit of a bug in here. If you didn't want to apply all, it then goes and gives you twice the email. Just, just to be on the safe side, and likewise, if you forward, you then have three times the email. Um, just to be on the extra safe side, uh, you can change between next mail, mime, 
and plain text. Um, you can set the read receipt, you've got access to your address book. Um, you would normally have a lip service here, but they haven't implemented it in this version. You have the spelling panel, uh, you have your font panel, and you have your color panel. The rest of the buttons on uh, here are the mailbox selector. Uh, this one lets you check for mail. This one lets you search inside your email. This one here gives you help. And then finally you can print an email here. Um, and that's that's pretty much it for the mail client. Um, it does work fairly well, um, although like I say, you have to resize it from time to time because um, it is beta quality and it doesn't draw um, the text as it should do. So what else do we have under applications? Well, I think that's pretty much it. Um, yes, so let's have a look at a few of the developer tools before we go on to the shelf. So um, ignoring DB Modeler and EO Modeler, here's the classic editor application um, that provides programmer facilities. So if you go into preferences and you go into developer mode, set, um, and then quit, and then relaunch, you have a whole bunch of programmer utilities that you can use whilst you're editing code. This is so you don't have to use Vi or install Emacs or what have you. Although to be fair, this is kind of moot now because if I go into Project Builder, um, if I create a new project, because I've, I found it hard trying to find a project in the examples that would actually compile. So if I go in here and, and create a new empty application, we now have, um, as well as a method for managing the project and building the project, we now actually have an integrated editor um, that we can use. Um, so for example, I can go to a new, uh, create a new class and call this derp and go into the header and um, create an interface, I don't know, let's uh, uh, herp. And then we can go in here and, oops, didn't want that. For example, I, I really don't like the tabs here, but you could go in and you could set all the um, indentation rules that you wanted. Um, you could go in and, um, in later versions, you can set colors. In this version, you couldn't, you um, you only had um, single color, but at least you could go in and you could change the indentation rules. To compile, you'd use the little hammer icon and you had various options. You could set the build options, so you could target, let's say next and, and, and Intel. And then you'd have the button to clean. This would basically remove any binaries that you had in your code, and then you had build. Um, build would show you the, um, ooh, wow. Build would show you the results of the make here, and it would also uh, show you um, what's going on with any. Okay, let us let me just, um, let me go and remove these from the project, actually. And let's see if I can get it building, actually. I don't think I have the next. Ah, so there we go. I was just simply missing the um, the libraries and the tools to build for the next platform. I can only build for the Intel platform. But there we are. That's test.app built. And if I double click it, nothing much will happen. Just an empty window and, and, and a menu, and that's it. So yes, that was Project Builder. Um, the options are, um, this would build, this lets you find in the project, this shows you what loaded files you have in the editor, uh, this shows you the inspector. You can either um, edit the, the attributes for a file or the project, or the various build options. Um, then you had the debugger, and finally the object browser. Um, both of those are disabled in this particular builder, project builder, um, but they become part of project builder later on, as we'll see when I get to open step. So that's pretty much it for project builder. Um, interface builder is pretty much the same. So here we have the uh, the palette window. If I create a, if I create a new application, here is the um, application, um, the interface um, project itself with the various instances, classes, etc. And the inspector. So this is, this is its final form right the way through to Rhapsody and I think exceptionally early builds of OS X as well. So the demo applications, there aren't really that many. 
um, differences. Um, it's pretty much the same as you would get in Next Step 3.3. Um, the admin tools are pretty much the same as you would get in Next Step 3.3. So that leaves this thing. So let's have a look at the shelf. Um, I actually quite like this and I kind of wish that Next had run with this interface rather than reverting back to the Next Step 3 interface. Uh, but let me just load up Edit and create a whole bunch of new documents so I can demo this. So if I hide this, um, under Applications you have a, a list of all running applications and if you click on it, it it'll either unhide it or it will focus the window or the menu. Under Documents you have a list of all running documents, um, all open documents. If I hide Edit again and go back to Documents, I can unhide it that way. I can also select individual windows to, um, to highlight. Now the X doesn't actually let you close the window. Um, it's just telling you that the window can be closed. So if I type a whole bunch of junk here, the X turns into a broken X like it does in previous versions of Next Step and again here. Now unfortunately this doesn't appear to work with old Next applications. Um, so if I load up, um, actually let me go in and load up Edit. This is the Next Step, oh no sorry, um, Edit Classic, that's what I wanted, sorry, Edit Classic. So Edit Classic is the Next Step 3.3 version. Um, if I just create a whole bunch of new windows of that and I go here, there is no Edit Classic. So it looks like this only supports applications that use the OpenStep NS document class, um, which is a bit annoying, but you know this is beta software. Um, I assume that, that either they didn't have a way of enumerating windows or they didn't add it in this particular beta. So another feature um, is once you save the file, you get this little icon here appear. Um, this doesn't work for everything, but um, you can command drag the icons out and do things with them. Um, it has to be said that also works with, with older versions of Next Step. Um, so yeah, back to the shelf. So the shelf basically works the same way as a dock. Um, to put things on the shelf, you just go to the, uh, to the file viewer, um, go to where you want and just drag them onto the dock. Um, you, if, if, if that happens, if you hover the mouse over the tabs, um, it will take you to the tab you want and you just put it on the dock like so. Uh, a single click, so if I go to the root directory, um, a single click takes you to that directory and a double click will open it. Um, ditto with an application, so if I take that off and if I put, um, I don't know, let's let's put um, let's put Parasheet on here. So if I put Parasheet on here, um, go to my home directory. So single click will take me to the application, and a double click will launch it. So the, the, the shelf acts as both the dock and the shelf on the file viewer. So you can do operations. If you didn't want to open a second file viewer up, you could do operations by just dragging things. Um, so if I wanted to if I wanted to move these, I could put them, um, let's put them by here. Um, and these two as well. Oops. Put them by there, create a new directory. Uh, stuff, except I can't spell. So stuff and then I could just drag them out and in this case they would copy but if I held down command it would move and then I can just drag them off and be done with them. Adding a new shelf is fairly simple you just drag out from here uh, move your shelf where you want name it um, let's get rid of untitled so now I have a new shelf named stiff Alrighty then, um, to remove the shelf you then go and drag, now you have to be careful how you do this because the mouse has to go over that, um, so that's the next demo, so you move it and um, you have to move it from the very end actually, and then the mouse turns, uh, the tab turns transparent and the little icon points to the left and turns red and, and that's how you delete a shelf. You can resize the shelf vertically so that has a depth of three rows. 
um, or you can minimize uh, by dragging down and that now becomes an auto sizing shelf if I hover the mouse over it it flips up and then back down um, I prefer it like this actually because um, the shelf is always behind rather than on top and it kind of gets annoying if you move the mouse down and, and the shelf flips open and you didn't want it to or what have you so this button by here basically lets you drag and drop the the current highlighted shelf uh, what I mean by that is the shelves, um, the tabs themselves are, st are stored in uh, a directory structure here. Um, and if you had a common tab, let's say you had a common tab that had workflow for an office, you could um, go into the file, it's into the mail viewer, um, you could create a new email, oops, wrong button. Um, and then you could go in and drag that and it would put it as an attachment usually is set this not what's going on here okay so you have to do it the hard way usually it lets you drag it out as an attachment there we are and then I can attach that, that. Ooh. so I guess um, next mail okay so I, I guess I've broken mail um, yeah, a broken mail. But yeah, you could attach that as um, an attachment and um, send it off to people. And when people double clicked on it, um, so they would load in uh, in the shelf. So there we have now got two main tabs. And again, to get rid of it, goodbye. That is OpenStep 4.0 pre-release one slash next step 4.0 codename Mecca. Um, I hope you've enjoyed. As usual, if you have any comments or suggestions, feel free to leave them below. Thank you very much for watching, and see you next time. Hey Steve, I believe from way, way back. Because I felt that you were on the right track. Well, I laughed and I cried when I heard you speak. Down ten big bills that week. Hey Steve, hey Steve, I believed, I believed, and I did what it took to buy into the dream. I'm a next step man, I'm a next cube guy. So I don't want to hear that the cube may die. It's 12 by 12 magnesium black. Got three more empty slots in back. Hey Steve. Hey Steve. I'm on my knees. I'm on my knees. Hey Steve, I'm begging you, please don't kill the cube. Now I'm getting some stuff about ethical drives. And I'm starting to feel some real bad vibes. Cause I put down 2,500 bucks. Like I'm sure fucked. Hey Steve. Hey Steve. Oh please. Oh please. Hey Steve, and don't you be thieving my optical drive. Hey Steve, I believe that the future is next. And I've tried to give you my personal best. I believe in the vision and I look for the quest. So I hopped on a plane and I flew out west. Hey Steve. Hey Steve. I believe. I believe. Hey Steve, I sure believe the future is next. Hey Steve. Hey Steve. We believe. We believe. Hey Steve, we sure believe the future is next.